what is the civil-military divide? And if it's such a big challenge, what can we do to improve the situation? The truth is, it means something different to everyone. To one civilian, it may mean feeling alienated from the military community due to a lack of knowledge or lack of friends or family members who have served. Perhaps he or she thinks that the military's values vary greatly from her own. To a veteran, the civil military gap might resonate upon returning from military service and returning to a civilian community that might not understand what he spent the last three to 30 years of his life doing, nor his reasons for serving. Two groups in our society experience the divide most vividly, undergraduate students and national policymakers. While some students are exposed to ROTC cadet classmates or have friends or family members who have served, others have no connection to the military, despite the fact that some of these students will one day be in important national security positions. To me, the civil-military divide is a combination of all of these factors, and I've experienced it personally many times. I'd like to share a few stories. As a freshman at Middlebury College, who also participated in Army ROTC at the University of Vermont, I seemed to lead almost double but complementary lives. Once or twice a week, I would wake up very early and try to quietly put on my ACUs and boots without waking up my freshman roommate. I would then walk about a mile across campus to the freshman parking lot, which was located just behind the Fine Arts Center. And one morning, I had almost made it to my car when I was abruptly stopped when an upperclassman walked out of the Fine Arts Center, meandered toward me, and asked, Hi there, what play are you in? I've never seen you around here. I didn't have much time to talk since I'd be late for my military science class, so I quickly let him know that my uniform was not in fact a costume, but my actual government-issued uniform for Army ROTC. Another occasion occurred just after I returned from a deployment to Afghanistan and found out that I was going to change units and move to a new position at 10th Special Forces Group, which within the military is often referred to as SF. And so uh, a veteran friend of mine found out and commented on my Facebook page and said, congrats on your new position, you're going to love SF. And then about five minutes later, another friend of mine commented and said, Emily, you have to call me as soon as you move here. There is so much to do in San Francisco. <laughs> About a month ago, my husband went on a mountain biking ride not far from Fort Carson with a friend from college. And after a few miles, his friends started asking questions about my military service, such as, does she get paid? And at first, when he told me about this, I was upset, not by his question, but by what it implied. I started to think about all the other groups in society who do not receive a salary. Prisoners, homeless people, interns. Was there a link in his mind between those groups and service members? However, at the same time, I was glad that he was at least asking questions about my military service. So, as a result of these experiences, I thought of an idea called Sword and Plow during the last semester of college, which I hoped would improve many of the challenges that I experienced as a cadet, beginning with a focus on strengthening civil military understanding. Sword and Plow would also exist to empower veteran employment and reduce the abundance of waste. Today, Sword and Plow upcycles thousands of pounds of military surplus into stylish bags that are made by American manufacturers that are veteran owned or operated. We then donate 10% of profits to veteran organizations that are committed to our mission of strengthening civil military understanding. The most visible ways we contribute to strengthening civil military understanding are by using the sword and plow bags as conversation starters, spurred from the materials used to the reason the owner carries the bag and supports our mission, to highlighting various veterans and social entrepreneurs on social media who really motivate our team and align with our mission. And as an active duty service member, as well as a veteran, it has been just so incredibly exciting to see how much these two communities have in common. The strongest similarities I see are a huge sense of drive, dedication, selflessness, and teamwork, no matter what hour of the day or night it may be. 
What we're really passionate about is emphasizing that every person is capable of strengthening civil military understanding. At Middlebury, I learned that the biggest cause of misunderstanding is simply not knowing or interacting with veterans or service members. So if that is you, I encourage you to get out there and approach a veteran in conversation that goes past thanking them for their service. Instead, try to find out what their service involved and what it means to them. We have such a huge opportunity to improve the divide. One potential solution is to increase thoughtful conversation between these two groups at the formative undergraduate level by creating academic programs centered on leadership, grand strategy, and civil military relations. These courses would cover topics ranging from the role of the military in the U.S. government to citizenship and service to the principles of leading soldiers under difficult circumstances. And finally, how the U.S. uses military power to advance national interest. More broadly, it would examine how military power serves as part of grand strategy. The importance of strength and understanding between the civilian and military sectors is really more pressing than ever, as more than one million veterans are projected to leave the military over the next few years. Many people wonder how veterans will fare in the job market with such increased demands placed on the workforce. I wonder, how will these veterans be received by the civilian communities they return to? Now is the right time for every citizen to join together to start this conversation. Thank you.